Alright, in my last video, a couple videos, we took a look at the Surface Pro 3 just as an overview. We looked at the Surface Pro 3 as a tablet, and now we are going to look at the Surface Pro 3 as a laptop. So stay tuned. Alright, so now let's take a look at the Surface Pro 3 as a laptop. So here it is in tablet form and what I'm going to do is just pop out the kickstand, snap on the keyboard by just pretty much setting it on there. You'll, it'll snap, it'll find its way in, you don't really have to do anything much with that. And then we just slide up the keyboard here, it magnetically attaches to the screen, pull over our Surface mouse. And so, one thing I've ran into often, um, sometimes with tablets, when you try to use them as laptop, is they begin to slow down. You begin to realize that when you're using a mouse and keyboard, that you can operate so much faster than you can um, when you're just using touch. But the Surface really has no issues holding up to that. Um, I can open multiple files here. Uh, you can see all one right after another. Um, it is super, super fast can open up multiple documents. The keyboard itself, um, the type cover actually works really well. Took maybe a few minutes, maybe an hour to get back to my top speed on this keyboard. Um, but uh, overall, um, it works very well. And I can type really fast on this, just as fast as I can on any other keyboard. Um, I can type 70 plus words a minute on a regular keyboard. I can easily type 70 words a minute on this keyboard here. So I don't see the keyboard as an issue. In the some of the original models when they had the touch cover keyboard, uh, that was a little harder because you didn't get the tactile feedback of the keys. Um, but this is really nice. It's also backlit. So if we turn off the lights here, you'll see that the keyboard um, is uh, backlit and that is uh, very nice especially when you're working at night and you're using it as a laptop you know maybe in the bedroom or in the living room with all the lights off stuff like that I like the combination of touch and the mouse and keyboard which is kind of nice so if you're typing through you know long essay like this it is nice to just be able to swipe through your document tap on where you want to type and then just start typing on that again so that's very good um, like I said super fast um, you know I have all these documents open here and you know I'm not even using half of the memory yet the CPU usage is really low um, everything is very good the battery life um, will definitely get you through um, quite some time. Um, it's not going to be a full day device probably. Um, light, I, I do take this with me to work and I use it as a secondary device and it does get me through the entire day with about you know 60-70% still left at the end of the day um, but that's sparing use throughout the day. If you're using this heavily um, for work, constantly using it, um, it probably isn't going to make you through make it through a full eight hour day um, but you know, just bring the charger with you and it'll be fine with that. So let's go ahead and close out some of the stuff I opened up here. And just for fun, we're going to open up Minecraft. Now Minecraft isn't a super intensive uh, game, but it definitely can be, um, you know, a little bit heavier on your CPU um, than most. And so, although it's not, you know, Grand Theft Auto V, um, it definitely does um, work as a decent little test here. So let's just create a little world. And you can see how fast it loaded the game. And, um, you know, it loads the world, builds the world all pretty quick. Let's make sure we have Task Manager open here so we can see the performance. And you can see here the, um, the 1.9 gigahertz and uh, Intel i5 has actually boosted itself to 2.5 gigahertz and is now running at 100%. So you can quickly see here that Minecraft does take quite a bit of CPU usage. Um, but it's all okay because you can actually run through the game uh, pretty well. Um, you get a little bit of lag, but you know, I get a little bit of lag even on my desktop too. And right now, you know, we just jumped right into this world. It's still loading the world up. 
So let's actually just, um, come on, let's go for a little run here. The uh, Surface Type Cover keyboard actually works okay with this. Um, I actually found myself uh, playing it for actually a couple hours one night just in the living room. And um, I was actually pretty pleased with it. The only problem was the battery died um, really quick because, you know, obviously it's using a lot of CPU horsepower. Um, but you can see here the world's loading really nice, um, smooth. Okay, so now if you listen, let me go ahead and turn down the volume. You can probably hear that fan in the background. Now it's right here. And if I put my hand right here on this right side of the tablet, it is quite warm. Um, actually, if I was holding it like this, it would probably be hot to the touch after some time. And that is simply because the CPU is now being actually used quite a bit. It has upclocked it to keep up with performance. Um, and so that fan is going to kick on. You actually can see the speed here dropping down. And that is because it is getting warm and so it's attempting to lower the speed so that it can um, keep up with the heat needs. But even though it's doing that, I'm not noticing a huge, you know, I'm not really noticing performance issues on my game. And so that is good. It's just basically while it was paused there. Oops, I didn't mean to close that. While it was paused there, it was trying to tone it down to help keep it cool. But as soon as I needed the resources again, it brought it back up. So that's it. Quick little look at Minecraft there. The resolution on the screen is really high, so there may be some times where the text is actually really small. Um, so if you are um, hard of seeing, it could be a little difficult there. Um, but you can go into the um, screen resolution. Yes, yeah, screen resolution, make text and other items larger, and you can bump up the size of everything on the screen to help with some of that. Let's take a quick look at this as actually being on your lap, because right now I pretty much have shown you you know how it works when you're sitting at a table, um, which is great and dandy, but if you're really going to have this as a laptop replacement, it has to be able to work on your lap. Now at this setting here, it's actually really comfortable. I, I am laying, leaning back a little bit in my chair because if I was leaning forward, um, my hands kind of push towards the keyboard, so I do have to lean back a little bit so my hands are resting comfortably. But then from here, I'm actually you know pretty comfortable with it. And I could definitely do some work like this. Um, it is very sturdy when I type, so actually let me just go ahead and open up a Word document here. Um, this is still very sturdy when I type. So uh, Surface Pro 3 with the little magnetic attachment here makes the keyboard way sturdier. Um, this is actually a really, um, you know, really sturdy. And um, you know, I can move my legs around a little bit, it's not going to fall over. Um, no little issues here. Um, but you can't, the only problem is you have to keep your legs fairly straight if you, you know, move your legs a little bit. Well, actually you could probably do that, but you're not going to be able to do something like this. Um, you, you know, once you cross your legs, you kind of lose that straight edge for the laptop to sit on. So this just isn't going to work. Now the other problem with this is if this was a laptop, like this, and there was a hinge, well... You know, I could slide this all the way to the end of my knees and just adjust the screen like this, right? So you do have to use the kickstand, and the one flaw with that is that means the back of the device is actually stretching out further. So if you wanted your screen, you know, laid back a little more, you have to adjust the kickstand out more, which right now it's starting to fall off the back of my knees. So I have to slide it forward so that it fits. And now I have to lean back even a little bit more in my chair so that my arms, you know, my arms naturally want to go here. So that is probably the only complaint for it as a laptop, but what I've found is if I get it right about in that setting there, I can get it pretty far back, and now I'm pretty comfortable sitting um, upright in my chair. I've even used this laying down on the couch before. When you're laying down, you can actually pull the stand all the way back, and then you can actually kind of type like this, the other great thing I'll mention about the Surface that I really liked when using it is I've used laptops before and sometimes it gets really warm on your lap. So let's say you know I'm playing Minecraft or I'm you know editing a video. On a normal laptop, right here is where all the components are. And the fans are blowing out the back sometimes, and so all that heat is resting on your legs and blowing out the back. And you know, within 30 minutes to an hour, you're sitting there and you're like, oh, I'm sweating, you gotta move the laptop off, you gotta do all this. 
With the surface, all the parts, all the heat is up here, it's standing vertically, and it's all blowing out the side, um, or venting passively out the top, so you never feel the heat. Even if you're, you know, with it like this, that kickstand is still keeping the parts actually off of you. The only part really touching you is the kickstand and the base of the tablet. The trackpad, a lot of people complained about the trackpad. Honestly, I hate trackpads, which is why I bought the mouse. I don't know. To me, it's fine. It's it's the best touchpad they've had on one of their keyboards. Um, so I don't really see an issue with it. Yes, it'd be nice if it was a little bit bigger. The touchpad's not great, but it's not bad. Um, but for me, that doesn't matter because I'd hate using it anyways, which is why I bought the mouse. So by default, it comes like this, which makes it really nice when you're uh, walking around. So you just, you know, slide the pen under the keyboard here. Put the mouse like that, and you can easily hold this all um, with one hand. So then when you're ready to come out, you just slide off your pen and your mouse, flip out your kickstand, flip down the keyboard, turn it on, and then all you have to do with the mouse is just bend it like that. So it clicks into place, the light comes on, and it nearly immediately connects into um, the tablet. Uh, I've been using this for a couple weeks now, and it is, um, out of the multiple tablets I've used, it is the first one that I've actually continued to use. Like, most of the tablets just are a toy, and I have to struggle to find creative ways to use it. But because this runs full Windows, because it has a keyboard, a mouse, a pen, it has pretty much anything that you would already have on any computer or tablet you already have, I found it very easy to just uh, pick it up and start using it for stuff. This is where the device begins to shine and begins to be worth the value that um, you would pay for this. And so I really feel like the Surface Pro 3 is the closest we have, it's not perfect, it's the closest we have to a true all-in-one device um, that can replace a tablet, a laptop, and even your desktop if you're not doing hardcore uh, video editing or gaming. So thanks for watching my videos. On the Surface Pro 3, we will continue to look at this device as it evolves, as Windows 10 comes out, and beginning to look at more and more stuff that we can do to um, integrate this device with our services that we already have, and um, at how this device can really become an all-in-one replacement. So, thank you for watching.